Hello everyone and welcome back to our community. If you're new, I am Jen. I talk about all things health, wellness, self-care while living in New York City. And today we're going to talk about how to start a podcast without any experience whatsoever. I started my podcast back in January, 2021, just a few months ago. And I've already been featured on Spotify podcasts on Instagram. And I was ranked number 49 under mental health in Apple podcasts. But let's back it up back to January when I had zero experience with podcasting whatsoever and how I started and what you need to get started. I know, I know. It's like, how do I get my podcast on iTunes? How do I get it on Spotify? What equipment do I need? How do I interview people over Zoom? How do I get it recorded? There's so many beginner questions that seem super intimidating at first, but by the end of this video, you will be good to go and well on your way to starting your podcast. So let's dive right in. Okay, so the first thing you'll need is a microphone. Now, if you are on a super, super budget, it. This is the best thing about podcasting. You really do not need to spend a lot of money whatsoever. So many free options. If you have AirPods, you can totally just start with AirPods and before investing in a microphone, see if you like it, see if you're going to continue with podcasting, and then you can up level with a more expensive microphone in, you know, a few months or something. But if you do want a microphone, I personally use the Blue Yeti microphone. I have it in black. It's the Blue Yeti and it comes with this stand. Now this little pop filter thing was like five bucks on Amazon. I will link all of this equipment down below. This just makes it so that all of those like T's and sh and like those annoying little noises that certain syllables can make, it doesn't sound as piercing over the mic. So this is completely unnecessary when you're starting out, but it's $5. So I'm kind of a perfectionist. So starting my podcast, I was like, it's $5. I'm going to get it. I know this is a really popular mic for podcasting. It's super easy. I like that it has a mic stand. So when you're interviewing, you don't have to worry about holding the mic and the wire like hitting the table or anything or fidgeting with the wire because that can actually cause some crazy sounds in the microphone but because it has a microphone stand you just set it up in front of you and you are on your way pro tip when you are using a blue yeti put the gain all the way down and then use this little heart shape for recording so that is how you will get the best sound and i have a macbook pro so i have this little adapter that plugs into my computer and that's all i do i plug this in i have my airpods in to prevent echo if you might I hear a little echo in my apartment. I don't have a lot of furniture, or a lot of rugs, so it's easy, easy to, to get, echo get echo during, during the recording. The so I always put headphones in to prevent that. We don't have to get into why that prevents echo, just, just wear headphones. All right, next up is how to record virtually. So this is still under the equipment umbrella. Zencaster is an amazing free resource where you can record both tracks separately and locally. So what that means is you go onto Zencaster, you get a link, you send it to your guest, you both go on that link, you're both recording, your guest might be using AirPods, head, another form of headphones or a legit microphone. And same with you. And instead of it all be re being recording on one shot as if me and you were in this room together recording on my computer, both of your audio tracks are recorded separately. So that means when you go into an editing platform, if you edit on GarageBand or Final Cut Pro right now for videos or something, then you know that you can have two separate audio tracks on top of each other, which makes it super easy to adjust one volume or mute someone if they're talking over the other person. So it's best to have separate tracks so that if you're talking over one another, if someone coughs while you're talking or something like that, you can mute the other person, make them louder, whatever you gotta do. In addition to Zencaster, you can also use Zoom. People were preferring Zoom because you could do video as well, but actually Zencaster now implemented a video platform so you can talk to each other on video while you're recording audio and you can also download the video if you wanna use it for an Instagram graphic or upload your podcast episodes to YouTube or something. Zoom and Zencaster have the same features now. They're both free, so I recommend Zencaster because it's made for podcasting. Zoom ne isn't necessarily made for podcasting, but if you're already used to Zoom from work or something, you can absolutely do the same thing on Zoom. Record, make sure in your settings that they're being recorded locally, which means separate audio tracks and you're good to go. So if that doesn't make sense to you, it really will once you get into editing, which we will get into as the last form of equipment, editing software. So like I just mentioned, GarageBand is a great free resource, although it's not the best. I've heard of a lot of people having issues with it. So you can use Audacity, but if you are someone who also does video editing like me, I'm on YouTube, I already pay for Final Cut Pro. So I use Final Cut Pro because I'm already used to it. I already pay for it. I'd rather have it all in one platform. But if you are just starting a podcast and you have never edited or done anything else ever, then I would do Audacity or for free, you can do GarageBand. And truly for editing, I get a little nitpicky and I edit out like certain ums if it feels natural to edit that 
out and if it doesn't sound choppy and I can just like take out someone saying um or or coughing or something like that those are the things I'll edit out other than that there's really minimal editing for podcasting so it's a super easy learning curve you want to edit making sure that the volume levels are the same for each guest and things like that but those are some of the editing softwares you can use okay next up is hosting so what does hosting mean hosting means you have one hosting platform where you upload your episode you are not individually uploading to iTunes to Spotify to Google you are uploading to your hosting site which then distributes it everywhere for you which makes it so easy so I know it's like how do I even get my podcast out there you just choose a hosting platform and that's it you sign up you do all the things you have to do when you first get on there and after your first week it's super easy you upload your episode you upload you know the description and the show notes and everything you know that's on there and then it distributes to iTunes Spotify everywhere you can listen to podcasts so one thing to note is that for your very first episode it takes a bit to get your episodes live so this is one major major mistake that almost everyone makes when starting a podcast they tell all their friends or their whole community if they're an influencer or whoever they tell they tell them that you know my first episode will be live on May 1st and everyone gets excited and they start posting all these graphics and they're like episode goes live tomorrow and they're doing this whole campaign and they upload the episode onto their hosting site and they realize it's taking a week plus to get on iTunes that happens to be the one that takes the longest I mean not iTunes Apple podcast same thing right so most of them tend to just take anywhere from five minutes to a few hours on your first upload but Apple podcast is sort of notorious for taking much longer I got lucky and mine got uploaded in like a day but if I had said I'm uploading it right now everyone go look in five minutes everyone would have been like where's the podcast so just note that it does take extra time so what I did since someone did warn me of this after I posted all these graphics that my episode was gonna be live the following week after I uploaded a trailer and intro episode so I uploaded an intro episode and I did not announce it anywhere it was just for me to upload an introduction it was like welcome to dare to self-care this is my story this is all about me your host and what you're gonna find on this podcast and it was like a 20 minute episode and I uploaded it like a week before I was going live with my first real episode that I was gonna be announcing and promoting out to the world so that I had a week of buffer time to get that first episode uploaded on there so that the following week when I wanted my first real episode to go live it would take just a matter of seconds so after your first upload to all of your platforms then from there on out you can upload it and it will be uploaded to iTunes Spotify everywhere in a matter of seconds I usually do mine every Sunday night I upload it so that I can make it go live at 6 a.m. on Monday morning and I just wake up and I'm on my way so that's how I do it so you can schedule it or just click upload and it will go live so what are hosting sites the most popular one for beginners is anchor because they also give you the sponsorship of an anchor advertisement where you get $15 an advertisement or something like that $15 for every thousand listens or something like that I don't use anchor so I don't know the exact form but I do know that it's super user-friendly you can even record podcasts on there so I would use anchor if I were you I'm on red circle because I got recommended by the okay sis podcast girls Maddie and Scout who are actually my good friends now they were sort of like mentors to me which is why I have like such great tips I owe it a lot of it to them but they recommended red circle because they're really good about being super small and almost like an agency where once you have enough downloads under your belt they help you get sponsors and advertisements almost like a network would so I'm with red circle right now and something cool that they have is something called cross promotions you know every hosting site has their own little differentiating factor if you're more interested in making like a little bit of cash to anchor if you're more interested in like cross promotion and things like that do red circle I just realized all of this crap has been there here the whole video just change the whole background mid video okay next up is pitching guests if you are having a guest interview style podcast you can totally have a solo podcast you can have a podcast where you review movies or like you can have a podcast on literally anything but if you are going to have guests on your podcast here is how you pitch this is going to be a bit of a series so I have two more videos planned one is things I wish I knew before starting a podcast and then the other is how to promote your podcast for growth and how I got featured on Spotify podcasts and how I got ranked and all of that so that's gonna be more of a marketing episode if you will so I will definitely do a deeper dive into guests and things like that that can even be another video but here are the basics you can start with an Instagram DM. DM them a quick message about how you love 
love to have them on your podcast. Tag the podcast. If you have more followers on your personal Instagram, message them from there. If you have more on your podcast Instagram, message them from there. Again, we will talk all about Instagrams for your podcasts and everything on a separate video. Don't forget to click subscribe if you want more of these podcasting tips. There's lots more coming your way. And if you click subscribe, they will pop up for you right when I launch them. I don't know why that took me so long to say, but you get the point. So I would say I would love to have you as a guest on my podcast to talk about X, Y, and Z, get super specific so they know that this message was intended for them intentionally and it's very personal. Keep it brief and be like, if you're interested, I would love to send you an email with additional information on the podcast and scheduling, etc. So let me know your email address. If you have already had some guests on, if you're watching this, you're starting a podcast. So if you have some guests lined up, you can mention them and say already confirmed guests are X, Y, and Z so that they know that you are, you know, you have some similar guests coming on the podcast. And for bigger guests or really any guests, I would really engage with their content before reaching out. I would make sure that you're commenting on things, you're replying to their stories so that when you do reach out and they see the thread above, they see that you've been super supportive and you're a genuine fan and this will be a natural conversation. All right, now for the jingles, this is not mandatory at all, but you can create an intro jingle and an outro jingle. So if you are going to do that, basically what that is, is if you listen to podcasts yourself, you hear a little bit of music in the beginning and sometimes they say like, if you listen to mine, here, I'll cue it right here. This is my intro jingle. Dare to Self Care. I'm Jen, lifestyle YouTuber and your host of this podcast, where we dive deep with insightful guests to find out how self care has played a role in their success. Welcome to our community. that. So what websites can you find some of these jingles on? You can find them for free on any copyright free websites. So you can use Epidemic Sounds, you can use Hello Thematic, just Google copyright free music for podcast intros and you will find a bunch of sites. I'll link some down below. Super easy. And then all you have to do is record some audio over the track or it can just be music, whatever you want. I like to do an outro jingle as well so that I can just say thank you for listening. Reminder to, I'll play it right here again. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I would so appreciate it if you could take a moment to rate, review, and definitely subscribe so that you don't miss another insightful episode. You can also engage with the community on the Dare to Self Care podcast Instagram, so definitely join us all there, and I will see you guys next week. Bye! So that way, every single time, I don't have to do that same outro and reminder. I just throw that in there at the end of every episode. Again, this is not mandatory, but if you want to make it sound professional and you're super excited about starting a podcast, just some tips. And then lastly, start a podcast Instagram. This is a great way for people to be able to actually engage with your content. And it's really not easy to promote your podcast on the podcast apps. It's the worst algorithm ever. So if people can find you via Instagram with your little reels and clips from the episode, then and that's a great way to grow, which we'll talk about in a separate video. So thank you guys for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. It helps out the algorithm so much and I would really appreciate it. Please subscribe so we can keep hanging out and I will see you guys next time. Good luck starting your podcast. I'm always available for any questions on Instagram at Jen underscore Lauren with two N's. DM me if you have any follow-up questions. Comment any questions down below and I will see you guys next week. Bye.